got a hope. I got a hope. I got a cry. See you. 
Sink it while you have the chance. We are made of not but clay. Till we change on that great day.
Oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. more time oh lord prepare oh lord prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving i'll be a living sanctuary you Lord oh it was you Lord who gave the Savior heart and soul Lord to every man it is you Lord who knows my weakness you refine me with thine own oh Lord me. Oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Good morning. This is Michael Burns from the Two Cities Church, obviously, and it is such a joy for me this morning to be able to introduce to you our guest speaker. Today we're going to be hearing the sermon, the Word of God, preached from a good friend of mine, Edwin Shumba. Edwin and his wife, together, they lead the church in Harare, Zimbabwe, one of the churches that we help to uh, support and that we partner with. We help support financially and, and partner with them spiritually. Uh, Edwin is such an amazing brother. He's been leading the church in Harare now for a couple of years. He's been on staff there for several years before that, and I've been able to spend some amazing time, uh, my wife and I, my family, with their family um, in Harare. Edwin is an eminently humble, godly, sincere man. And above all, I think he's just very steady and faithful. He has a steady personality and a faithful disposition. And we're so privileged, I think, to be able to hear from Edwin today and really help us focus not just on what he wants to share with us from God's Word, 
but also just, you know, continue to calibrate our minds about the needs um, in Africa that we uh, have been so blessed by God to be able to help support our brothers and sisters there. You know, the brothers and sisters in Zimbabwe um, continue to be faithful despite circumstances that I think would shake our faith in a lot of ways. An unemployment uh, rate nationally that has gone as high as 90 percent, uh, a collapsed currency system, and, and just continuing ongoing challenges with shortages and supplies and and the economy in general. And, and yet the brothers and sisters there uh, continue to trust God and seek first the kingdom. And so there's an incredible uh, amount uh, of uh, aspects of the faith that we can learn from them. And, and, and so uh, I, for one, am very excited to hear from Edwin today. Uh, I hope you are as well. So sit back and enjoy, and let's dig into God's word together. Hello, brothers and sisters in the Two Cities Church. My name is Edwin Shumba, and this is my beautiful wife, Christine. And together we bring you warm greetings from the Zimbabwe Church. To begin our service, let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you are our God. We appreciate you, your steadfastness, your consistency, your mm. availability in our lives. We appreciate the very fact that today we can be together with the Two Cities Church, even though we are not with them physically. Mm. We appreciate also the fact that you are a virtual God, and we know that you are around us everywhere, and we can depend on you with any and every situation. We love you, God. Help us always to be aware of the times that we don't love you enough, mm. so that we can be drawn back in this relationship with you. Mm. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, we just want to thank you. Thank you so much, God, for your love for each and every one of us. Thank you so much, God, for the gift of family. That, Father God, uh, you know, we have technology that enables us, Father, to connect mm. with our, our brothers and sisters, Father, across miles and oceans. Mm. Thank you also, God, Father, for bringing the world to a standstill so that we can be certain that you are indeed God mm. and that you reign supreme. Father, as we come before you this morning, we want to humble ourselves. Father, we want to commit our time, our lives, Father God, into your hands this morning. Father, Lord, as the scriptures are being opened, I pray that, Father, you also open our hearts so that, Lord, your word, Father, may find a place to rest. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you so much, God, Father, for all that uh, you have allowed us, Father, to be able to experience, especially these last few months, God. Father, we pray, Father, for our churches, Father God. We pray... Father, for your spirit, Father God, Lord, to move in and amongst us, Father. We pray, Father God, that you may meet us all at our points of need. Father, be with those that need encourage, encouragement this morning, mm -hmm. that they may receive encouragement, Father. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray also, God, that Father God may uh, meet, Father, the needs, Father God, of those uh, that cannot be reached out to, Father God. Thank you once again for this time. Father, what an honor and a privilege it is, Father, for my wife to be able to share the Lord's Supper this morning. Father, we pray that, Father, you may continue, Father God, to help us to be humble and to learn from you. Thank you once again for this time. We love you. We ask, we pray in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So first, firstly, thank you for the honor and the privilege to be able to, to share the Lord's Supper with you this morning. Now, my wife and I have been married for the last 24 years. And uh, we met in the church, and God has since blessed us with three amazing and beautiful daughters. Rumbi Zai Kelly, who is 21, Laura Shumba, who is 15, and uh, Lisa Shumba, who is uh, 12. Now, we've been serving in the full-time ministry now just a little over five years. And uh, these have been very wonderful years, but also full of challenges. Mm. We live, of course, in a country that's had its fair share of uh, problems and hardships for much of the time, over the last, uh, I don't even know how many years now, <laughs> both economically and uh, politically. Mm. And that's had a huge impact on society in general, mm. as well as the church. However, we continue to see God's power in an amazing way in the church. And for that, I'm going to ask my wife to share a little bit about the church. Amen. Let me start by saying we are so grateful to God mm. that no one in the church has officially contracted COVID-19. 
That alone is a miracle. Mm. With stats standing at 5,377 infections and 141 reported deaths countrywide. We are a church of 325 disciples with two couples serving in the ministry. Mm. One couple based in Bulawayo and the other couple in Harare. The lockdown, however, has presented some challenges, mainly mm. in shepherding. However, since January 2020, we have witnessed 26 baptisms and two restorations, mm. the majority of those during lockdown. We are particularly encouraged by the brothers and sisters studying the Bible with their friends virtually during this time. Mm. Our 21-year-old daughter, Rumbi, got baptized in April, mm. and that has encouraged us as a family. We give honor and glory to God. Satan, however, has also been on the warpath during this lockdown. We have sadly lost four disciples during this time, with some facing challenges, just with adjusting to the new norm. That is us in short. But let me start off with a question. What are you grateful for this morning? Now, you and I live in a busy world, and life can be a challenge having to deal with all kinds of things, dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic to all sorts of injustices going on throughout the world. Now, I am reminded this morning of our brother Paul in his letter to the Colossians. You know, at this time, Paul is sitting in prison. He's under house arrest in Rome. But in spite of the challenges that he was facing, Paul took some time to be very grateful and to be thankful. Do you take time out to be grateful? Today, I want us to focus our attention on gratitude, a virtue that I do believe is critical in understanding God's grace for you and I. Let me also hasten to say, even though we have not met the majority of you in the church in the two churches, we have such fond memories of those who have visited Harare in the past. And they have painted to us such a, a beautiful picture of the church there, how warm you guys are and how caring and how and how sacrificial you all are. Michael and, uh, of course, Michael Burns and my Krisha Burns, together with their sign Eli Elijah and our brother Neville, have been here. And, uh, you know, those guys are really fondly remembered here. And we thank them and all of you for the support over the years. Thank you also, Colin, and your wife and the leadership group there for giving my wife and I the opportunity to be able to share in the Lord's Supper this morning. So our text this morning will come from a post letter to the Colossians in chapter 2 and part of chapter 3. Amen. So we pick it up in Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. It says, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith, as you were taught, and overflowing with thanks, thankfulness. You know, our journey begins with making Jesus Lord. And isn't that so exciting? That no matter how different we may be, in what part of the world we are from, our spiritual journey begins with making Jesus Lord. So Paul here paints the picture that there is a biblical expectation of gratitude. And if you're like me, quite often I'm more grateful for the more positive things in my life, like a birthday, for example. Now, where I'm from, where we are from in Harare, Zimbabwe, you know, there might be a lot of differences between us and yourselves. And there may be things that you take for granted that you are less grateful for. Maybe because of uh, the differences in economy, things like clean running water, power, electricity. Just yesterday, we had a power cut. You know, even freedom of speech access to medical care. The list is long. You know, Paul writes this letter under house arrest. And he makes it a point to stress that we need to be grateful, that our lives need to be overflowing with gratitude. Paul was grateful for the church in Colossae, the family of God, and the impact of the message of Jesus in that part of the church, even though he had not seen them. You see, as I said before, our lives are a journey. And that if we are not grateful now, for whatever reason, we can still learn gratitude as we go along. Whether it is ingratitude towards God, 
and we take God for granted, whether it's our lack of gratitude for each other as brothers and sisters, whether it's our lack of gratitude for members of the family, which quite often we find ourselves in. Paul says, gratitude must overflow. It needs to spill out. How about that? Think of something that is spilled out. Imagine a, a pot of boiling water that spills out or a glass of, of, of water that is, that is spilling over. It is, it is easy to notice, isn't it, my brothers and my sisters? And this is exactly what Paul is saying, that our gratitude should be easy for all to see. How grateful are we this morning? Amen. Let's turn over to Colossians chapter 3 from verse 15 to 17. Once again, Paul is still writing to the Colossians, and he says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Amazing. You know, in these very few verses, Paul re-emphasizes the need to be thankful once again. The need for us to have gratitude written all over our hearts. You know, and the more Paul speaks to the church here, the more we get to understand that gratitude is a condition of the heart, as opposed to what we might have. But you might ask, how easy is it to be grateful when they strive? How easy is it to be grateful when we're going through difficult times? How easy is it to be grateful when we're living through a global pandemic and all the other social injustices, when there's no clean running water, when we don't have ac access to, um, to, to, to medical treatment, you know, when, uh, you know, the political environment is not right. When there's no freedom of speech, how easy is it to still be grateful? At this point in time, I'll ask my wife, Christine, to share a little bit. One of the things that I distinctly remember when I first visited the church millions of years ago <laughs> was the relationships that struck me during that time. People were so loving and so warm, so sincere and so genuine. And I remember also at one point when I eventually studied the Bible and got to study the cross study, how convicted I was to understand why the relationships were this way. For me, one thing that I truly value and I'm grateful for are the relationships that we have in the kingdom and in the church. I love hanging out with my fellow sisters. I love sitting there and chatting about nothing and everything and deep talks as well. Now that we are in lockdown, it's not the same anymore. I miss meeting up with disciples. I miss giving the hugs to the sisters. I miss just being around people. But I do know that God has given us this new normal so that we can learn to appreciate each other and not take each other for granted. I know nowadays, me and my husband spend a lot of time on the phone, um, talking to different people, couples, individuals. Sometimes we pray with different brothers and sisters, basically trying to encourage people. And I love it. Basically, I find this very fulfilling. But at the end of the day, I'm just grateful to God for him and his church and how we can be together and experience his wonderful goodness. Amen. Well, one, one lesson is certain from Paul. Let's be grateful. And as we focus our thoughts on communion this morning, I am reminded back in 1990, I had just become a disciple in my late teens, and everything was working out fine for me. But one particular afternoon, I had been sitting in a Bible study taking notes for a friend when I was picked up by police and spent that night in jail, mistakenly. I will always be grateful for that single event because I saw God's love for me once again through a brother Onyechi Ogwaya, popularly known as Nichi. He was my disciple and the leader of the church at the time. He literally stormed into the police station and vouched that I would never do a thing like that. 
and instead he asked the police to release me into his custody and that whatever would happen should I run away they could imprison him instead we walked out of that police station and I was super super grateful for the release from jail and so as I look back I am more grateful not just for the release from jail but a lot more for the love and validation that he had for me sadly Nietzsche passed on uh, in New York years later a, a few years ago actually and he has gone to be with the Lord he battled cancer for a while you know but I have since learned to value the people God puts in our lives through the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so amen so this morning what are you grateful for I am very grateful uh, for the brother who met me back in 1990 and uh, studied the Bible with me and I made my decision to make Jesus Lord of my life. I was a teenager at the time, but my life was headed for disaster. I had already experimented with so much in life, drunkenness, immorality. I had no respect for life or for others. So this morning, I don't know what the cross of Jesus means to you. What are you grateful for? And as we partake of the Holy Communion, let's remember to be grateful. Let's remember to live a life of gratitude. And so as we begin a new week, I leave you with something to think about. In what ways has your gratitude to God and others been measured during this time of the pandemic? It will probably be a good discussion to have either in the family or in our small family group. And secondly, as you begin the week, take some time out to reach out to a brother or sister and let them know what you appreciate about them. At this point in time, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer as we pray for the bread and the fruit of the vine. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you, God, and uh, very, very grateful, Father, and uh, we are humbled, Father, by you. Thank you so much, Father God, for giving us the very best in your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, Father, for just the... the, the enduring father god the, the cross thank you father god for allowing him father god to die a shameful death so that father god we can find our way back to you father we stand justified today not because of our good deeds but because of what you had to give up and what your son jesus had to go through father help us father to be grateful help us father god Lord, to be grateful for the blood that flowed help us father god to also be grateful father for the men and women that you've put in our lives Thank you so much, Father, even for the gift of life. Thank you, Father God, for the many things that we take for granted, the little things, things, Father, that we take for granted, Father, like clean water, a good health care system, Father, and all the other things, Father God, that we, we literally take for granted. We thank you so much, God, Father, for being faithful to us always. Bless the communion. We ask, we pray in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.